Hi, well, you're in for a treat. Some lovely handmade wooden items in this film. And it's the best of the competition entries from the Bodger's Ball. And in this film is going to be spoons, field and craft, and the junior classes. And really, you're going to see lovely carved spoons, lovely baskets and pots and other items. And here are the trophies. So strong competition for these. That's the best in show trophy. And then next to it is the Barry Plant Spoon Trophy. Now, people enter these, uh, the membership vote, and you'll end up with people being first, second, and third places. But they're in individual classes. We'll go straight in with a wooden item. So this is something which doesn't fit into the other categories, and it gives scope for great imagination. As in this case, this rather good jacket. Are you fed up cutting yourself in half with your draw knife? Then you need the woody waistcoat. And it's a rather clever little like armor-plated wooden jacket. A uh, bit of a naughty, cheeky sense of humor, perhaps, here. Um, Bodice here, perhaps. So great imagination. Very nice little uh, clothes pegs here for hanging up your coat. I really liked these. The finish is lovely. They're simple and very pleasing to the eye. But be a nice little addition, I think, to virtually any house. This bench was rather clever. Well, coffee table, I suppose. It's going to have the Beatrix Potter characters in miniature. And the carving was absolutely beautiful. So there you are. You have your little rabbits from Beatrix Potter. And you can imagine it being populated with a few more. The actual um, coffee table itself was very nice. Lovely piece of wood. Nice grain being shown. And... Nice feet on there. They've been shaped to look like animal paws. And this is the thing. People put in a lot of detail and a lot of thought. A lovely bit of truck work there. I have put a film up on making trucks. And there's quite a skill to get those boards to lie flat and to have your truck actually hold goods. If you do it really well, you can make it waterproof. And that one looked pretty good to me. But it is, you know, again, you look at the items, you see them close up and you can appreciate the detail. I've made this quite a long film intentionally because I feel that if you didn't manage to get to the Bodger's Ball to see these entries, you can see them close up. I could have skipped through, but perhaps in a way that might be a shame because if there's something you particularly want to get inspiration for, you will doubtless see it here. As a child, we had knives like this with bone handles where someone's obviously taken the blades and put wooden handles on. It's good fun. You see what people get up to. You see their ideas. Keeping the kids amused with little whirlies there, a bit like the sycamore seedlings as they fall off of a tree. Now, this rose was seriously quite something. Uh, it had been all completely carved out, uh, and the detailing, the texturing, everything was completely perfect. The head made out of one piece it was absolutely amazing. And I think the thorns have been stuck on, but it just looked so perfect. And this, quite rightly, did get the best in show. It's unusual and very well executed and rather clever. <laughs> and it's been interesting because traditionally best in shows tended always to be armchairs. But in recent years, that has changed. And I think it's quite refreshing. We get sort of people being quite innovative and trying to... <laughs> He never ceases to entertain with his entries to remember the last two. Um, in second place... Yeah. And in first place... Now we come on to spoons and we split these into two groups, knife finish and sanded finish. So knife finish means basically a surface is just finished with your carving knife. I personally prefer these. Uh, I don't like sandpapers you may have picked up in earlier films. The style and variety of spoons is ever increasing. And it really has been a factor in like the past probably four or five years. The actual standard's gone up and up and up. 
and so is the number of different styles. A lot of colour roasting and quite a lot of colouring now appearing on spoons. I've had a go at this doing little knife cuts and then staining with coffee and it is very effective. I mean these are superb examples. But I've done simple little designs and things like initials as presents for people and it's, it's good. Again, I like to see the different varieties of wood that's being used. You get some quite nice sportings and, oh yes, I like this little bird. A little presumably robin or something on the top of that spoon there. There's another one actually you'll see shortly which has, I think it's a grouse. So this is quite a good example of the colorosing on the surface there. Doing very fine cuts with a knife. Bark left on, using nature to good effect and it works well, very pleasing. And this is the thing, these spoons, they are so varied. You've got different types of spoons, you've got different styles of the making, and it really has <laughs> moved along. We're noticing the same things happening with bowls, with uh, wooden turned bowls at the moment. A little bit of humour there. But there's a lot more bowl turning going on. I did admire this. It's like a spiral twist on the stem of the spoon. So that's sycamore wood. And... Uh, we saw a lot of milk paint and linseed oil type finishes, but milk paint generally on quite a few of the exhibits. Clever folding, spoon, fork. So yeah, bowl turning is becoming very, very popular at the moment and milk paint finishes and you'll see more as we go along. So this is a spoon class, knife finished. Uh, third prize goes to Paul Adamson. Second place is Daniel Lawrence. <laughs> and in first place is Adam Hawker. So sanded finished spoons here and a grain, a very good selection. So that's a wide sweeping view of the table. One person had had a bit of fun, I think, they'd exhibited a whole group of spoons for curry night. You'll come, that read us like the ladle, I suppose, but it wasn't part of this group. So we have curry night, making the curry, serving the rice, uh, the starter, the main. So spoons carved for each part of the sequence. I thought it was just quite good fun, a bit of a laugh. Um, a lot of people are camping there, so I wonder if those are used later on for having a nice camp curry. You never know. And again, why does a spoon have to be straight? Cracked willow there. It's good. You're challenging. Uneven stems. People really are, as I say, thinking a bit sort of beyond and making things a bit more interesting. Some of the small spoons, they're really nice to look at, nice to hold. I made a very small beach spoon, I think in one of my films actually. And it's a lovely little thing to use each day. Gets daily use. One more of these twisted stems. I think that's very clever. So um, each year there's Spoon Fest, which is a, a meeting in the UK of spoon carvers tend to be very popular. We've got Bowl Fest coming up in the current year with wood turning of bowls, a uh, different location. That's the grouse I mentioned earlier. There's a UK whiskey brand in uh, which is called Famous Grouse. I wondered if that influenced that one perhaps. And then look at this, acorn. And they captured the um, acorn parts I thought very well with that one. Another large ladle. Now this one had a bit of reindeer horn and a loop of metal at the top of it. So again, why think of spoons just as simple, you know, wooden objects? You can actually progress them, and that's what people have been doing. Really strange shapes. Right, non-turned treens. So this is anything which hasn't been turned on a pole lathe, and it's not a spoon. So you get some very nice uh, canisters, you get very nice oval bowls. And I personally really like the simplicity of this one. Nice Celtic sort of work at each end as well. Very pleasing to the eye. 
you pick them up they feel nice and thin all over very well done now I mentioned milk paint earlier and this is quite a good example so order with a milk paint finish and it's quite striking and you'll see more milk paint as we go along some of these tankards were rather good so taking advantage of twigs and fixing them on but it gives quite a good shrink pot tankard and we have done a film on shrink pot making so why not do shrink pot tankards next time very nice basket work I've put up a film on harvesting bask uh, bark for basket work haven't done a film on basket work proper yet I like this so Nordic influence to me I could imagine that looking a little bit like a, a Viking longboat again I like the line I like the finish very pleasing these are sorts of things I would really like to have in a home and one of the things I sort of when I look around at these and think well what do I like and you know what would I sort of mark as being a, a good first second or third I always ask myself would I want to have this in my home and um, there's some beautiful entries here absolutely beautiful uh, a shrink pot now this is rather good they've obviously sided this shrink pot and it does look nice with a little lid as well decoration on it so that really is taking shrink pot and a good base that looks like a waterproof base as well so a nice piece of work you can imagine people I mean they meet up in local groups the members of Bodgers Org so we have about 1100 members now in the UK and they meet up in county groups so I'm a member of the Kent group which is quite a large active group but they meet up at different places people help each other out with getting wood and pass on hints and tips and it's nice you meet up socially you have a good old chat you try a few things so more milk paint I did say you'd see some more milk paint and that's a very pleasing finish nice piece of work that so yeah memberships very reasonable to and you get it like a quarterly magazine as well so well worth being a member and if you do public demonstrations you can also get insurance which is quite a good sort of member benefit but people are really nice they're lovely groups all walks of life um, but the thing that binds everyone is an interest in green woodworking in carving wood in making things on a pole lathe so if you have a look on the net and look at bodgers dot uh, org dot uk then you'll find out more about the bodgers people sometimes say to me actually oh where does the names of bodgers come from oh into turn -treen. and it's the itinerant uh, chair leg turners that used to work in the beach forests making chair legs so here we have a rather good selection and I liked there's um, some very nice bowls I look at the sporting on that one very nice simple design very pleasing to the eye beer glass effect on a burl and a little bit of pink banding again okay, very nice people harvest a lot of this wood obviously they get it um, from woodlands from tree surgeons etc etc so you do get some kinds of wood that you probably wouldn't see in your typical timber yard this one's a supperware box and I tried I was holding a quite a heavy camera doing this needless to say because it's fairly low light uh, so I was struggling to open it with one hand but I think I should have attacked it from the other end but it looked rather good and very nicely made And again the variety of things that people enter their imagination <laughs> going quite wild so lime wood turned outside carved inside and I like this barrel I thought that was good fun you imagine turning that because you've effectively have got like a shrink pot end on it so that's a replica of one and presumably the body of that's been turned on the pole lathe and then they've managed to make shrink pot ends so I'm slightly off camera here so probably not holding it or showing it quite so well I like this it's a cake stand and again milk paint the weight of that, of that to turn that on a lathe you see you'd probably be using a bowl lathe 
would be actually quite difficult because it's quite a heavy weight to have on a treadle lathe and you've got to be very accomplished to make something like that. It's simple in its design but it's actually very clever as is that delicate beaker. And you see more milk paint here on a bowl. And look at that, colorizing on like um, a nice cup, very nicely done. So field and craft next. And this is where you get quite a lot of basket wear, bits of leather work, and other things that probably don't fall into other categories. But again, very nice workmanship, including this rather splendid oak gate. It felt beautiful to the touch, actually. Lovely tactile, nice piece of wood. Very nicely done. Look at that. <laughs> that is no ordinary gate. The baskets, I you know, never wonder at the sort of quality of these, the way people make them. Uh, something I must have a go at sometime. But that's split hazel with some copper wire. It looks a good, strong basket. It lasts many, many years. And it's nice to see people keeping these crafts going and, you know, again, trying them out, trying to make nice items. One more here. Are we going to see it? It's hazel again. Yeah, obviously, again, quite a nice wood for basket making. Of course, you can go for the coloured effect as well. So behind it is coloured effect. These baskets are lovely and light, and it's funny to think they were the sort of standard fare of, you know, times gone by. So that's hazel and willow. A bit more colour there. So a few members make baskets, belong to groups that make baskets. Quite an active basket making community. This one, uh, chestnut hazel, woven wool, and it was rather a fun piece because it's quite colourful you'll see in a minute as we come down here we are a bit of artwork a nice bit of weaving a nice natural fibres quite pleasing to the eye and again more rather nice baskets I put up a film on doing um, rush seating and the lady who helped me learn the rush seating does a lot of basket work and she runs courses in basket making. I think she'd be quite happy for me to give her name. It's Christine Brewster, very accomplished, uh, well worth looking on the net to attend one of her courses. She is a lovely lady and really is, you know, an excellent tutor as well. So that's um, Christine Brewster. Again, rather nice baskets. And a lot of these baskets, of course, have quite strong heritage links for they were used for, you know, feeding particular animals or holding particular kinds of seeds and all that sort of thing. So there's a lot more to all of this than perhaps might casually meet the eye. I think, was that a cockle collecting one? I forget now. I like this, a simple bit of leather work on a nice basket. So say it's um, oak tanned leather oak and hazel basket a very nice little piece the lid was actually sewn on leather so we've got some sort of strap assembly and then you've got this nice little lid again all in leather with the lid sewn around and nicely done and a very pleasing basket with a little spoon inside you can imagine having your little picnic or you're catching your fish and popping it in I don't know lots of uses of a basket like that very nicely done. The item below it, the S leather sort of triangle there, don't know if we're going to see it, perhaps we're not, is actually a bib for spoon carving. Put it around your neck, have it in your chest, and you can then carve a spoon and not hurt yourself. There you are, that's the recess to hold the end of the spoon while you carve it. So it's a spoon carver's bib. And we have another basket here, a different kind. Again, such variety. Really nice. A few other sort of slightly unusual items here. We had um, little birch bark, oak and elm little pot. So using the bark to make a pot. And you can make some quite secure, quite strong little pots like that. 
again pleasing to the eye, a little leather tankard with tooling. So uh, one of my friends, Bardster Crafts, does a lovely tankards and very accomplished. As does um, hedge laying Phil, he does nice tankards as well. So pop the film up on hedge laying, hedge laying Phil in that film does tankards, as does um, Bardster, also known as Paul, who was running courses actually at the wall as well. Another little very cute basket. Imagine collecting eggs in that. Probably just about big enough. Well, for a few. <laughs> you might want the basket next to it if you have a few more chickens. So that's bramble. So do not pass a bramble by without thinking you can make a basket. And then we've got a bit more leather work here. So oak leather upholstery nails and buckles. So people also say what materials they've used and what power tools, if any. Power tools are slightly frowned on, you see, it should be all handwork. Wooden sides makes quite a good rigid case, actually. Again, rather clever. And we had a nice quiver beside it for holding your arrows and a little separator so your arrows don't rattle and hurt the feathers. It looked quite a nice arrow. I used to make arrows, actually. So I haven't done any longbow work recently, but it was something I used to do in the past. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I always have a soft spot for the tools and devices, probably because I like making things. And um, well, one of the things I had here was the Bodger's briefcase. And essentially it's a shave horse that you can put onto a bench. So you can take it any way you're going really. And it's quite a good design this actually, fits on. It means if you haven't got much space, you can actually do some woodwork on the go. <laughs> Blacksmithing is always quite popular and um, this person has combined a bit of making knives with some leather work as well. Leather work is creeping in more and more. Of course, as you know, I do leather work in quite a big way. I thoroughly enjoy it. And it was partly through the bodging that I got into leather work because I was making tools and then wanted to make covers for them. And from little things, big things come. So I'm now doing, as you know, pretty well full-time leather work. These are great knife covers. So they sort of um, slide across, the heads slide across at the ears, little pegs. And it exposes your knife blade. But they're both functional and decorative. And I thought rather nice. So silver birch and, of course, more milk paint. So, yeah, I did say the milk paint was popular. Nice knives as well, actually, under those little heads. So I one-handed the camera, a bit awkward to show you to actually, but you can see it's halved fair and it can slide out and expose your knife blade. I particularly liked these. And the lady who I'm assuming made them was running courses as well where you could make knife covers. So I ran leather courses before the ball. There were quite a few courses this year. So on the Thursday and Friday, I had two lovely groups of people to run courses and they were making anything from ax covers to phone cases to notebooks. And it was very good. And there were lots of other courses, anything from sharpening a saw through to turning a bowl, through to using a pole lathe through to doing basket work and very popular with our members and it means we sort of use the marquee obviously in advance of the main event so it's a win-win for everyone it's good for tutors and it's good for people who want to get some particular training to be on site and get some training from someone they know nice um, knife making on all of this nice u handle on that one very nice grain and that will probably go a lovely color as it ages as well and get sunlight on it. But yeah, I must do a little bit more tool making sometime. I, I do enjoy it. And of course, you know, it's it's good. I didn't enter anything actually this year. I, I do intend to next year try and come up with one or two things. I, I think for me, I've been doing so much sort of leather work and quite a lot of creative stuff with bits of leather work that I'm finding that I've been doing less woodwork. I enjoyed the sociability and going along, meeting up with friends, etc. But I've not been as sort of actively doing lots of woodwork projects, which is 
probably a little bit of a shame in a way so I must try and get back and do a bit more but it's always you know time it's having time for doing things time is the enemy look at that good cover themed item now each year we have something which we have a theme for and because this was being held at the Weald and Downland Museum the themed item was something which could be used in a Weald and Downland building so it was really anything that you would expect to find in a Tudor house and I very much liked this order flask so that has been turned on a pole lathe uh, there's been a disc for the back of it turned also made to fit and glued in so they could actually hollow out so it's a bit like turning a wooden bowl but you've got the sort of spout and everything in the way at the same time so quite a difficult thing to do and rather clever and it's taking bowl turning you know a further step again lovely timbers a nice writing box or storage box there and um, you'll see the lid come up some old deeds inside to make it seem <laughs> specific to the houses but I thought that's quite a, quite a fun touch and this sort of themed item it gives people a chance to sort of think about what's appropriate for the site where we're holding the ball obviously you'd find the bowls like that in the houses With places like Tintersfield when we held the Bodgers ball there because it's a gothic building people did quite a few gothic designs which were quite popular a nice trusty rolling pin and look at this a I assume this is a salt cellar if it might be incense I can't so I read that on the smaller editing screen here but um, it was a very nicely turned piece of work and again all done on a pole lathe and you can tell what's been done on the pole lathe as you get nice little ridges it's a bit like the tooling marks if you plane the table or something like that uh, that's presumably a washing dolly for sort of turning your washing as it's in a tub of water to get it nicely sort of minced around and I think it's a winding stick looks like it yeah I think so so yeah all in all though a great variety we try to encourage younger people to also have a go at some woodwork so we have a couple of junior classes and so there's the primary school age and the standard here was very very high and I think you do get cases where sometimes the children their parents are professional woodworkers and so it's actually sort of probably catching at quite a young age but I mean the standard of these items I thought was incredibly good and it's fun nice little ideas that they have so um, again little descriptions to say what materials have been used what age a person is and whether they use any power tools and there are an aspiring rake maker and quite a lot of detail on this which was quite interesting to look at actually about how they had gone about it and the sort of sequence of processes etc a little shrink pot I mean that's amazing that's a 10 year old so um they've made that should be very proud of themselves very nicely done I think anyone would be very pleased if they'd made that and just behind it a captive ring bit of turning on a pole lathe so little babies rattle and you can turn those rings in situ using a little um, ferret tool and then we've got the secondary school and having a go at candle six again nice nice proportions nicely done and I've obviously taken the head off another candle to make it completely flame safe order and forged oh forged on I know they have obviously been busy forging very impressive and that's rather nice little set of chisel and axe as a bit of bodger jewelry I like that so yeah all in very clever I hope you enjoyed seeing those quite a bit of detail I know a longer film but it lets you see the exhibits properly Anyway, thanks as always for watching and I'll see you in the next film.